Hello my friends and welcome, let's go for the Frontlines update at first to the major hotspot near to Robotine. There Ukraine took some of the ground, not a lot but still propels forward each day. There are two reasons why it is happening very slowly in this area. You can see those defense lines over here, well Russia can strike even more. They use even the roads and the tree lines as their defense. Soon the leaves from the trees will fall and it will make the task for Ukrainian army a little bit easier to identify the army vehicles of our enemy which could be hidden in the trees. I just refreshed the browser and definitely it's the glitch in this military map resource. So the defense lines from the north of Novoprokopivka were already passed by Ukraine. We also have the confirmation about it from the Deep State military map resource. For the last 24 hours there was no further movement towards Rebove village, however still Ukraine has the success over here by penetrating the Russian defense, so I expect that we're gonna advance very soon. It is not happening today because Ukraine lost quite a lot of the armored vehicles near to Verbova in an attempt to get this village under control. Now it's time to regroup the forces and advance, but a little later. Generally speaking about the front lines, we see just two of the points where Ukrainian army still pushes the enemy out from their positions. First one is over here near to Robotina and Verbova. The second place is near to the Bahmut, the southern part. Klishivka and Drivka were liberated not long time ago. It means that Ukraine finally decided to concentrate the forces at least at two major points to perform the counterattack. Before the military officials from the United Kingdom and the United States of America advised Ukraine to concentrate at one particular point all of the resources and I would support that. It looks like Ukraine has no other choice because the weaponry we have is quite limited, so we are able to penetrate the Russian defense lines, but only in particular point, for example here. Before Ukraine also successfully advanced over here, taking a few of the villages under control, but the main defense lines of the Russian Federation is quite far away from the actual battlefields and what it will give Ukraine going to Mariupol or Berdansk, the main goal for us is to take Tokmak, liberate it, and then go to Crimean Peninsula. As you already know, this is the vector, but here are the most powerful Russian defense lines. Speaking about the Bakhmut city, I see this vector of Ukrainian counterattack. On the north, the counterattack stopped because Russia reinforced this area and the crucial heights are still under the Russian control. So I don't see the nearby perspective for Ukraine to encircle the Bakhmut city. And even if this task will be successful, if Ukraine liberates what remains from the Bakhmut city, still Russia has the major defense line over here, they have supplies, so I would say that Bakhmut is more tactical goal than the strategic one. Russia constantly sends new reinforcements to the city, to this part, and Ukraine successfully demolished them, but we also have losses, unfortunately. According to the information from the Ukrainian intelligence services, Russia is up to announce the new mobilization of around 700,000 men. Hmm, Leopard 2, again, disabled. No worries, my friends, everything is alright with that tank. Before we go to the story, let me tell you about the sponsor and the partner of my channel. Yes, it is the Atlas VPN. They have the special deal that was made especially for my followers, where you may get the Atlas VPN Premium for just 170 per month, plus 6 months for free. I use the Atlas VPN all of the time on all of my devices. Let me tell you why. It has military encryption standards strongly securing your data and your devices from being reached by government, unwanted ads and also hackers. Yes, you may say hackers, why do they need my account? Well, actually my friends, I got personal experience that my pilot blog channel dedicated to aviation was hacked, then I was using public Wi-Fi, all of my videos were deleted and after that hackers told me to send Bitcoin for them and they will open access to my own account. 
I didn't transfer anything and just started the new channel with the same name. And obviously after that case I used the VPN all of the time and for me personally Atlas VPN is the best VPN out there. It has a security breach device monitoring feature so it alerts me that someone tries to reach my device then I use the public Wi-Fi. Then I see that message I disconnect from that public Wi-Fi. Atlas VPN is very fast. It guarantees you the best streaming connection then you watch movies on Netflix. And also also by changing your virtual location you may get access to watch all of the movies all of the series on Netflix platform it helped me a lot and now my friends please check out my personal link or scan the QR code available on the screen where you may get the Atlas VPN premium for just 170 per month plus you'll have six months for free this is the best offer on the market from all of the premium VPN services plus Atlas VPN also helps Ukrainian army the last year they donated more than a million euros to buy the special raiders for Ukraine all right about this Leopard 2A4 tank it got stuck around two months ago and now Ukrainian army moved forward so our guys were capable to take it out from the mud and this is how it was done the tank is okay, it is even running on its own power again. Remember how Russia lost many of the armored vehicles and tanks during the February attack on Vuhledar? Well, according to the latest information, we know that general commander of the Russian military Gerasimov was in charge of this operation. This information was also spread around the Russian media resources. There were some rumors that Gerasimov is very talented commander, but now we know that it it's truth. Probably Gerasimov is doing it again. I don't have the other explanation. The Russian army still tries to attack the Ukrainian defense near to Nova Yehorivka. They took this village around one month ago but later on were thrown back by Ukrainian defenders. So now they sent more tanks and all of them went kaput and kaboom. Sorry guys, I cannot show you the full video on this platform. For that, please check out my Telegram channel. From what I can tell you, it was the total disaster for the Russian army getting the ground in this attack attempt. They lost many of the tanks and many of the armored vehicles again again how russia tries to attack the ukrainian positions this is happening near to the bahmut city here we go with a single russian tank somewhere in the open field really hard to spot and identify also it is very very slow i cannot show you the full video my friends for that please check out my telegram channel available in a video description just below there are lots of that stuff so ukraine obviously spotted that tank and sent a drone to meet that tank and greet it you can see the russian flag i hope you can see it they put lots of the efforts to mask it but now it's on open field so what's the use of this uh, cover so drone obviously went into the tank the tank was disabled from the first hit okay we have the video of Azerbaijani strike on the Russian peacekeepers in so-called Nagorny Karabakh it is hard to say what was targeted over there but clearly it is the station or the base for the Russian peacekeepers in that region you may even see the Russian flag the Azerbaijan army used the Bayraktar TB2 UAV to target the positions over there why they did it I'm out of clue about the yesterday's Ukrainian strike on the Russian Black Sea fleet headquarters we have the information from the Ukrainian intelligence that 34 of the officers who were at that building by the time rockets went into it were delivered to the hospital or completely gone. Some of them are even generals, for example, Alexander Romanchuk over here and Alek Tsekov. Yet we don't have the official information from the Russian side about their losses. Usually they publish it together with funerals, so we need to wait a little. And today we have the new satellite image of that particular building. You may see the central part is totally demolished. Also, it was hit over here, and I think here is just the shadow so this part is mostly intact i guess that ukrainian army knew where to hit because it seems like there was the meeting between the officers by that time 
But again, we need the official information, which only may come from the Russian side. All right, the Russian Illusion 76 crashed in Mali today. According to some of the resources, this particular illusion was used by the Wagner army to deliver goods and ammunition, plus the Wagner soldiers themselves. Russian officials say that this airplane wasn't used by Wagner, but they will never say the truth. The Wagner PMC is still located in Mali, so I guess that really it was the Wagner airplane or the airplane that was used by the Wagner army. Why did it crash? So far I'm out of clue. But it's very a terrible job to be the pilot in Wagner. The Challenger 2 tank was spotted somewhere in the Parisia region. As you can see, it's still the dry season out there. Also, I might say that we have some sort of the standard protection for the Challenger 2 tanks. They also have the modification with the side extra armor and the front armor. This grill on the front really doesn't do the job properly. There is the tuning with extra armor plate. I wouldn't say that Challenger 2 is vulnerable here on the front against the Russian tanks, but it is better to have the extra armor. For Ukraine, it's not very critical because we are not using those tanks in urban environment where they are more vulnerable against the RPGs or anti-tank missiles. This afternoon, the new kabooms were reported in Sevastopol. It's hard to understand what particularly was hit. Russia also put some of their ships to the Black Sea out from the Sevastopol Bay. This is the Striker armored vehicle with the mining plaque and let's see what happened to the Striker's wheels. You may see that one tire is missing, the other one is flat and the last one is flat too, nevertheless the Striker still runs. The vehicle itself is not damaged. According to the satellite images, Russia really has the problem with the barrels for their artillery. This is the storage of 152mm self-propelled artillery systems Gyatsin S. And the other picture shows that Russia used some of them and from the other systems they took the barrels. Every barrel as every gun has its own resource. And Russia desperately tries to replace them taken from the other vehicles. It means that they have a real problem with that stuff. President Zelensky commented on Atakem's missiles that the Ukrainian army will get very soon. He said that he expects the story to be the same as with F-16's fighter jets. Hopefully he is right and it is just the beginning of delivering the long-range missiles to Ukrainian army. By the way, according to Financial Times, President Joe Biden decided to supply those missiles to Ukraine even before President Zelensky visited the United States of America. It also looks like the United States of America wants to supply the weaponry to Vietnam. That's how the story changes, my friends. Yes, many years have passed since the Vietnam War, but now America wants to supply even the fighter jets to Vietnam. All because of the China, obviously. Vietnam could be the ally of the United States in the region. The new technological Russian armor that they use to protect their helicopters, probably they're just running out of tires. This is the Russian school geography book that they used to teach their children. So they call the North America, not the North America, but Anglo-Saxon America. I wonder if Mexico is also Anglo-Saxon because it's also the part of the North America. For the South America or Latin America, they call it Latin America as usual. So probably they have the friendly America and not the friendly one. According to some of the drone images, Russia may definitely use the Iosif Stalin tanks that were made then Iosif Stalin was alive. This modification was made in 40s, so even before T-54. Well, as for me, it's hard to tell where this particular image was taken, but definitely it looks like this Iosif Stalin tank. My friends, now press the like to this video and also please check out my personal link in the video description just below where you may find the Atlas UPM Premium with a huge discount that was made for my followers. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.